Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's have a look how we can apply a glitch effect to a photo. By applying a couple of filters and with the use of various blends modes, we will transform this image into this. Cool. So let's kick off. First thing I will do is to create a collection of lines which will act as analog TV scan lines. An easy way of doing this is to add a rectangle and then apply the Affine filter from the Filter Distort menu. To create a collection of repeating lines, the first thing I will do is to lower the eye offset and then decrease the eye scale. Now, with the help of the eye offset, I can position them. Perfect. To increase the frequency of the lines, I will apply the Affine filter again, either by using the menu or pressing Command F. Let me zoom in to get a better look. I think we can still increase the frequency. However, when I apply the Affine filter again, the frequency of the lines is too much. So let's undo that by pressing Command Z. I will apply the Affine filter again, but this time with different parameters. Let's scale the eye value down to around 80%. Here's a tip for you. You can still zoom in the image while the filter dialog is open. This can help you to see better what is happening. The value of 88% looks about right. Nice. This gives the image already a different feeling. Before moving on, let's give the layer a name. I will add another set of analog scan lines, but this time I will use the image as the source for that. I will duplicate the image by pressing Command J and will apply the Affine filter on this duplicate. Let me scale the X first, so we get an idea what is happening. Next, I will scale the I value. You see, we get these vertical lines based on the bottom part of the image. I'm looking for horizontal lines, so I will rotate the image with 90 degrees counterclockwise. The lines are currently out of sight as they move to the top. By increasing the eye offset, I can bring them back into view. Keep in mind that, at least in my version of Affinity Photo, that there is a glitch, which is kind of ironic as we are trying to do a glitch composition. Anyway, what we are actually seeing on the screen is the repeat mode even though the mode selection shows wrap. If I click on the mode drop down, the actual wrap method is now shown. Let's make sure repeat is selected. We can play with the scale i and the scale x to adjust the lines on the screen. I think this is about right. Let's rename this layer to bars2. Always a good idea to give your layers a name. We got the lines now and we need to blend it with the image. I will use the Add Blend mode for this, which works very well for this image. To have it blended better, I will open up the Blend options by pressing the cogwheel on the Panels layer and change the underlying blend range so the effect is lowered on the darker areas of the image. As a final step for this layer, I will resize and reposition it in a way I see fit. Basically, I want the bright area around her finger. Perfect. To get the focus back on the face, I will remove the lines on the left side of the face. Let's add a mask to the layer using the mask button on the channels panel. I will use a gradient to fill the mask layer. With the mask selected and the gradient tool, I can set the gradient. Well, it should be the other way around. Command Z to go back one step and try again, but this time let's start from the other side. Yep, that's it. Excellent. Time for the RGB shift. I will duplicate the original image layer and will use my macro to split the image in RGB layers. If you are interested how this works, I will put a link in the description to the video explaining in detail how to split an image into RGB layers. So, now we have our RGB layers, I will move the blue layer, the green layer, and finally the red layer, resulting in an RGB glitch. The end result already looks quite glitchy, and maybe this is enough for you. 
Well, let me share with you some additional steps to make it even more interesting. One thing you can do is to download a glitch image from the internet. Here is one, I just pasted. Because this image has a different color, I will add a recolor adjustment. And before changing the color, let me make sure it applies only to the glitch image by making it a child of it. Now we can change the color to something blue, as that would fit better with this image. We also have to make sure this blends in with the image. This time I will use the overlay blend mode. As I have chosen the color to be blue, I think it would be better to add it to the blue channel layer. We are slowly getting there. What I don't like is a square in the glitch image. I'm going to add a mask and paint with black on top of it to remove the square from the composition. Nice. Now I double click on the recolor layer to open the recolor settings and lower the lightness so it matches with the rest of the image. Perfect. However, I only want some parts of the glitch image to be shown. I can mask it by painting, but in this case I will draw three rectangles which will be the areas I want to keep. After selecting these three rectangles, right click and from the geometry menu select add so they become one object. Now I can move it as a clipping mask to the glitch image. Let me turn it on and off so you can see the difference of this clipping mask. Another cool trick is to apply a motion blur on the red channel. And set its blend mode to lighten. This will give the color dots in the image a bit more punch. For the green channel I will add some glitch movements. In order to do that I will need to rasterize it. So I can select parts of it and move them around. After rasterizing I can use the marquee tool and select an area I will glitch. Then with the move tool I can move or resize the selected area. I will repeat this process in various parts of the image until I get a nice glitched image. A tip here is to use the keyboard shortcuts, the M key for the marquee tool and after selecting an area the V key for the move tool. This way we can quickly make the glitches in the green channel. Pretty cool. Here's another cool way to add another glitchy effect. I will duplicate the image and apply a pixelate filter from the filters distort menu. Let's adjust it until we have nice large sizes of blocks. About this size is perfect. Let me hit the apply button and then zoom out. The reason why I zoom out is because I'm going to stretch the pixelated layer so the blocks fill a bit more of the canvas. Let's blend this in in a glitchy way and I always find the subtract blend mode an interesting blend mode. So let's use that. The image has become too dark. Let's fix that by opening up the blend option and adjusting the curve for the underlaying layer so that the shadows are not much affected by this layer. Cool, this indeed created a little bit of a digital glitch, like a JPEG artifact. To fine tune this pixelation I will add a curves layer and fine tune it a bit by adjusting the overall curve but also the RGB curves. The curves adjustment is now being applied to the whole image. So let me move it as a child to the pixelated layer. So it will only apply to that layer. 
I will play around with the various curves so you get an idea how it reacts on the image. Once I have a nice blend in the face, I will close the curves adjustment dialog. Due to the curves adjustment layer, we now see too much of the boxes around the face. We can easily get rid of them by adjusting the blend range. Perfect. One final step before wrapping up. I'm going to duplicate the glitch image we have in the blue layer and move it to the top. The duplicate action also duplicated the mask, so let me first get rid of that. Let's also change the blend mode of it. How about screen? Not really. Maybe color burn? Yes, this looks really cool. You probably guessed by now. Yes, let's adjust the blend range so it blends in more gently. The bright areas are still very strong, so I will lower its opacity. Time to move the unwanted areas in the glitch image by adding a mask and painting on top of the unwanted areas with black in the mask. Let me experiment with the recolor adjustment, which is quite interesting. You can get quite nice effects by playing with the color. Also notice how the masked out areas become more prominent when the lightness is increased. I'll continue to play with it until I find something cool looking. Like this maybe. Let's have a look at the before and the after. But before doing that, let me first group all the adjustments into one group. You can select all the layers and press Command G to group them. Now I can easily turn off the group to see the before and here is the after. Pretty amazing. Let's have a look at what I did earlier. That is what I like about these glitch effects. Every time you do the same process, the end result will always be different. Talking about our end result, I feel that the analog TV lines are a little bit too much. So I'll add a mask to that layer and mask out the lines from the face area. This makes the face a little bit more prominent. Finally to finish up, a curves adjustment layer to increase the contrast. But to make the image really pop, I can change the blend mode of this curves adjustment layer to add. This makes the end result really vibrant. If you want a more softer analog look, the blend mode exclusion does wonders. Well, that's it for today. I'm getting a bit glitchy myself right now, but hopefully you found the video useful and picked up some techniques on how to glitch your images. As always, thank you so much for watching and until next time.